Hello, my name is Anubhav Swami and I'm technical marketing engineer working for security business group at Cisco Systems. In this video, I will talk about Cisco ASAV high availability in Azure. This is part two of uh, this HA deployment. Uh, I would request you to watch part one because in part one, I have covered step one, step two, and step three, where I deployed ASA HA pair using marketplace offering, created UDR and associated UDR to uh, subnets and also created external load balancer. In this video, I will collect some information from Azure portal like subscription ID, Active Directory key or directory key and then I will create app ID, app key and associate this app key as a contributor in each UDR so that HA agent can initiate REST API calls and make changes in the route table. Once I have uh, my um, IDs with me, then I will uh, log into both ASAs, uh, primary and uh, standby ASA, and add failover commands. Uh, after adding failover commands, uh, ASA will initiate REST API calls and add routes in the route table. In the end, I will verify routes. So first step is to collect uh, subscriber ID, which can be found in portal uh, under subscription. Uh, you can also get your uh, directory ID from uh, Active Directory under properties, and then you need to create your application ID. So uh, I will show you all these steps in, uh, in, in the demo that I will do at the end of the video, uh, but make sure that your application ID is case sensitive. Once you have your directory key, subscription key, and application ID, next step is to create app key. Once you have app key with you, you can go inside your uh, IAM and add that application ID as a contributor so that it will get rights to modify routes in the UDR. Now, HA configuration is not uh, similar to what you have previously seen on the physical appliance or virtual appliance running on hypervisor. These commands are specifically created for HA failover. Uh, first command is to define which unit is primary and second command is, is, is for uh, defining uh, the peer IP and all the other commands are uh, uh, required in, or, in order to enable uh, application authentication for that app ID which you have created for enabling communication between your HA agent and your UDR table. So uh, once that is there, you are good to go. You are uh, uh, you are there to add uh, routes. I will add these routes and detailed configuration in description of the video or I will add a link from where you can get complete running configuration of working HA pair in public cloud. Last command is to enable failover. Similar commands are added on the uh, standby uh, unit with um, uh, with correct peer IP address and all the configuration uh, cloud authentication ID, directory ID, directory key is similar to what you have already added on the primary unit. And then uh, the other commands are required for adding the routes. After enabling failover on both units, one unit will become active, other unit will become standby and active unit will send out REST API calls and update routes in the route table which we created in video one. So these are a few show commands using which you can verify your failover state and there is a new debug command which is available which is known as uh, debug f over authentication which will show you authentication between your HA agent and that um, uh, the contributor or the uh, route table that you have already added there. I'll go ahead and pause this video and uh, log into portal.azure.com once again and I will enable uh, failover. I'll show you step by step how to enable failover and enable authentication as well. Welcome back. I'm now again in portal.azure.com. Uh, first step is to uh, collect subscription ID. So I'll go to more services and click on subscription ID to copy my subscription ID. This is my subscription ID listed here. I will copy this and copy it on a notepad. I'll use it in my failover commands. Uh, next step is again to go back to more services and here type active directory. Under active directory, if I uh, go inside uh, properties, I'll find my active directory ID. 
So this is my Active Directory ID. Next step is to create application ID. So I will go to App Registration. Under App Registration, I will click New App Registration. I'll give it a name ASAV HA Agent. In my URL, I will type HTTP slash slash and I will just use name of my app ID. So I will click create. Now I need to look for that app ID which I have created. So ASAVHA. I'll go inside this and I will create key. So next step is to create key. Here I will type ASAVH H A app key. I will select duration never expires and I will click save. So this is my key. I will copy this. So I have copied my uh, application key as well. Now I have my subscription ID, directory ID, application ID and application key. Now next step is to go back to all the route tables. So I will first of all go to outside route table. In outside route table, uh, left hand side I have access control. In access control, uh, I, I need to go there and click add. Once I will click add, uh, I need to add permission. I need to give permission to my ID as contributor. So um, I need to look for ASA. ASAV HA agent which I have created recently. So I will select this and save. I will do the same thing for all the route tables because my H A agent will add routes in all the route tables. So I will go ahead and make this application contributor for all route tables. I'm doing it for DMZ2 now. And for inside also. So I have now added contributor to all the route tables. Now next step is to um, gain access to both ASAs using these at public addresses. First ASA has uh, this public address and second ASA is another uh, public address so I will log into both ASAs so I'll just go ahead and pause this video for now and log into both ASAs and then I will show you how to enable failover commands welcome back I'm now connected to uh, both ASAs using SSH I'll show you IP config of first ASA and now second ASA I'll go ahead and add interface configuration on ASA1 so I've added all these IPs there on first ASA I'll do show IP here I will save this configuration 
Similarly, I will go ahead and add IP configuration on second device as well. I will save this config. I will show IP. Now I have dot four addresses assigned on ASA one dot uh, five addresses assigned on ASA two. I will go back and start putting in my failover commands. So my failover commands are in. Now I am adding my route table related commands. I'll go ahead and enable failover. Now I'm doing the same thing on my other unit as well. Failover is now enabled. Let me go to first device and type show failover. Yeah, so this device is primary and it is active. All these routes are getting pushed from this ASA. And these are the uh, route table names. So I will just type show failover here on this device also. This device is backup and standby. These are the routes which are getting pushed from standby ASA. So I will now go back to my route table. Let me see if I have routes in the inside route table. My inside route table is now populated. So um, in part one, when we deployed these routes, uh, there was no route in the route table. Now uh, these routes came from uh, ASA. And let me see DMZ2 route table. We have proper routes here as well. These routes are pushed from ASA using REST API calls. So I have all the routes with me now. Uh, I will save config on both devices. And let me see routes right now. So if I look at route table inside, uh, all the routes are pointing to uh, 1.4 which is inside interface of ASA 1. So as a test let me go ahead and reboot first ASA and now first ASA is getting rebooted so let me uh, do show failover here and let's see what happens. It is currently uh, backup so uh, fail shutdown is already enabled on that. Now let me see. Now this device is active and there is no peer. Okay, so if I look at this device right now, uh, it is secondary, but it is now active with no peer. Let's let's go back to our route table and see 
if there is any effect on the route table or not. Now you can see that all routes are switched to dot five, which is new newly active ASA. So this is how we achieve HA in Azure. So just to summarize, we started with uh, ASA HA deployment uh, using Marketplace image, and later we created uh, our failover configuration using subscription ID, directory ID, app ID, and app key, and added all those commands on ASA. Uh, with, uh, with those commands, A ASA HA agent was able to send out REST API calls to uh, UDRs to switch route, and this is how we have designed our uh, entire HA solution. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching.